Hey folks, it's your man Manny, and I'm here with a lot of dogs that I've trained. Um, and I wanted to talk about like the best approach in dog training. Is it positive reinforcement? Is it balance training? Um, is it balance training, but you know, don't use high levels of remote collar and don't pop the prong collar on the dog? Is it positive reinforcement training and don't ever say no and don't ever not give the dog what they want? You know. What is the right approach? Everybody's always asking, what's the best method? What's the best approach? And I got to be honest, folks, after many years of training, break. I've seen all different things work. I've seen the clicker, when it's done properly, be super incredible for getting a dog to understand classical conditioning, for getting a dog to understand that there's going to be a sound that lets them know when they did the right thing. Um, I've seen the remote collar or the prong collar at a high level save dogs lives and stop problems like aggression in dogs and the dog's never done that behavior ever again for the rest of their life and the owner's not even like that skilled of a handler and they're able to keep a very powerful dog safe and enjoy their time with them for the rest of their life because of some high level punishers. Um, I've seen dogs where if you were to use high level punishers and pop the prong collar and do the remote collar like this Malinois here, you're going to get bit. That's what's going to happen. If he doesn't understand these training tools and you think you're just going to put training tools and shock him and prong collar him, like you're going to get bit. That's what's going to happen. Um, and you know, also there's dogs like Lucas here, you know, if we didn't work the remote collar with him at an extremely low level, like level one and, you know, hand feed him and get him to the point where he's obsessed with food his confidence would have never come around. You know, you see all these dogs in this area, you'll never know which one used to be super dog aggressive, which one used to bite people, which one used to bark all the time, which one used to target children, which one wouldn't stop trying to play with dogs, which one um, was trying to chase squirrels all the time they were here, which one was obsessed with dogs and couldn't walk down the street. You won't know because we've had a successful training approach with each one of these dogs where we've not just reached the goal, but we're not really living in a world of management. And so at the end of the day, the best training approach, folks, it's the one that works. It's the one that you and your team or your family is able to execute and able to do. And the best training approach you can take is the one that allows us to be flexible. And when it's not working or when we are noticing it's not feeling the same way that we thought it should feel or maybe the way it did feel, we can stop and we can do things differently and we can adjust our approach. But sadly, this whole idea that there's one way that's gonna fit everybody and everybody's dog, when some people have old dogs, um, that you don't even have enough time to train this dog. In I mean, we had a 10 year old dog come in the other day. It would take me two years to train the dog and using positive reinforcement only or primarily if that was even possible. By that time, the dog might be dead. You know, and also there's this young Malinois, nine months old, doing some really crazy stuff. If I spend two or three or four months to try to get him to stop chasing children, like, no, I don't need to take three or four months to get him to stop chasing children. I can put him in a completely controlled environment. I can stop the unwanted behaviors immediately and I get him in a good headspace and we immediately start training him and look at him now. Achilles. Achilles, come. Sit. Uh uh. No. Come. Sit. This is after one week. Yes. So, at the end of the day, folks, I think the big thing that's happening is trainers are kind of painting this picture that you can't train your dog yourself. Or you don't have the ability to listen to what they're saying and then choose what you're going to do and try it out and then communicate and say, Hey, I tried this. I don't think that's going to work for me or I don't think that's possible, but what else can I try? Can I try this or can I try something else? I think trainers get in this idea that, you know, if you don't do things exactly how I do things, there's no way you're ever going to succeed. Hey, Hey, Shuggy, no. So Shuggy just kind of claimed this doorway. She's rubbing herself on there all innocent. And then she turned around and then snarled at Emma and was like, get away from the door. It's my door. Shuggy, no. And so Shuggy doesn't get to be by the door anymore. That's, that's not allowed. Shuggy, go on. Get out of here. Go. Go. 
but it's sad folks i mean people are bringing me dogs you know and sometimes they have two dogs i had a case the other day two different dogs and i was like dude this dog your big boisterous german shepherd she just doesn't take you seriously she doesn't respect you she's essentially manipulating you and without some sort of strong punishment or some sort of strong correction or some sort of consistent boundary with her you're just going to be chasing your tail you're thinking you're training her you're not she's just disobeying you and she's just not taking what you're saying seriously she's not really trying very hard to figure out what you're telling her um and so just you know put that dog in its place and then let's spend our time working on training instead of trying to manage a behavior that could be stopped with corrections or punishment but then there's dogs like lucas where at one point his crate stuff you know, had he not stayed here in my own house, I would never have seen the level of crate anxiety that he had. But there was that behavior of crate anxiety with Lucas that I just said, that's just not going to be solved with corrections. That's not going to be solved. Might not be solved right now. But we can fix everything else with Lucas and we've adjusted everything else. And are you OK with that if he can't stay in a crate when you're gone, but he's OK in the bedroom if you're gone? Yeah, he's fine. But, you know, what if we got on this? Oh, my God, every dog has to be crate trained. Every dog has to be in the crate when people are gone. Well, Lucas doesn't. He's fine not being in the crate. Had we put all that pressure on his crate training, it could have really screwed things up. So the bottom line, you know, don't be afraid to try different trainers. Don't be afraid to read different books. Don't be afraid to explore and investigate. And, you know, really what you should be doing is look at that trainer and look at their dog when they're hanging out with their dog and ask yourself, is that the type of relationship I want with my dog? And do I even have the type of dog that this trainer has? Shuggy, no. You're done. You can't hang out around here anymore because you were just kind of like claiming this space. Um, you know, does the trainer have the type of relationship that I want to have with my dog? Do they have the same lifestyle that I have with my dog? I mean, I'm going to a trainer that, you know, does a bunch of agility and never takes their dog to restaurants. And I want to take my dog to restaurants. I want to take my dog off leash on hikes. You know, or maybe you've got somebody and they're saying, uh, hey, you know, like my dog, I don't mind if they have to wear training tools and prong collars their whole life. I don't mind if when the prong collar and the remote collar is on, they look kind of sad and you're going, I don't think I have a dog where that's necessary. I mean, I, somebody brought me this Sunny and they were like, oh, the remote, the trainer said shock this five pound Chihuahua at the highest level until she stops and so we did we shocked her and we held it down and she didn't stop she kept doing it and then they told us you know don't pet her don't pick her up don't don't pet her and it was like we can't not pet our dog and we shocked her at the highest level and that didn't work so what do we do now you know with her we found oh actually she does really good um with a squirt bottle she does actually really good with a lot of low level remote collar work and what she really needed was a lot of socialization and a trainer who is going to be flexible with the owners and not blame them and, you know, hurt their feelings. Which, who wants to go somewhere and then just be, you know, ripped into you? I mean, and that's the thing too. Like, do you want the trainer that's just going to tell you how it is? These two are in love. But I'm not going to let them play because, you know, they're just, they're in a love affair, that's for sure. I don't want to let them play once they listen to me. But them just sitting here obsessing, pushing on the doors. And I, I told her to stop doing that. Uh-uh. It doesn't matter why. Like, you do something, I say, stop doing it, stop doing it. So, uh, case in point, here comes a person driving up the driveway. Folks, where are the barking? Where's the barking? Freaking 10 dogs. Not a single dog has a remote collar other than this Malinois. Oh, wait, that guy's got one. But I'm not... Hey, Achilles. Yes. And like, why would you give Achilles high value food reward? He just barked at someone, Eric. Well, he did, but he also recalled. Achilles, come. Uh-uh. No, come. Yes. Achilles, come. No, come. Yes. Sit. Yes. Does your dog need a bunch of food to be trained with? Does your dog not need food to be trained with? They're all different. There are some dogs, like, you just don't need much food to train them. Food gets them super excited. And these other dogs, like, without the food, your dog's going to be super depressed and upset. So at the end of the day... Achilles. At the end of the day, I mean, just 
do what works. Uh, listen to yourself. Listen to your dog. Follow people and listen to people who have dogs and a lifestyle and an energy that you want to have. And if what they're saying doesn't work or, you know, they don't seem to have the time or the wherewithal to give you alternate options when you're telling them that that's not possible, go look for another trainer. You know, there's so many trainers out there and they all have different things to offer. And don't feel like a loser if you go to three or four trainers. Like maybe you went to a really hard, gnarly, balanced trainer. And then you go to a really force-free, pure positive nut. And both of them, you go, oh, man, both these people are kind of crazy. This guy's just thinking yank and crank and shock every dog. And this crazy person's thinking if I just give the dog enough chicken, the dog's going to somehow stop being crazy. Well, neither one of them's completely right. Maybe eventually you find a trainer like myself who's like, yeah, I use the clicker, I use the remote, I use an insane amount of positive reinforcement, I'll use an insane amount of uh, consequences if necessary. Ultimately, whatever you want me to do, or whatever I need to do for the betterment of the dog and the community, yeah, well, that's what we're going to do. So remember, as always, folks, we don't blame them, we train them. Here's Nessie, my little coyote mix. Come on, Ness. Come on, Ness, Ness. Good girl, Ness. And, you know, we don't blame them. We train them. And that's the same for ourselves, folks. So you don't have to blame yourself. Whether you've had the dog for 10 years and you're feeling like, oh, my God, I'm a failure. You don't got to blame yourself. It's not your fault. There's not enough information out there. And training's being presented in a way that is really not... Personally, I don't think it's fair to the client. I don't think it's fair to the pet parent that things are presented as black and white. Hey, Achilles, no. She's going to bite you. Achilles, no. Ooh, ooh. No. When I say no, I say no, no. Not funny, no. And you can see Emma wants in on this. Emma's like, I want to tell him. Okay? And that's what Nessie needs. Nessie doesn't need the remote caller and to be shocked. Nessie needs someone who has a relationship with her to tell the other dog, leave her alone. She's going to bite you. And for her to understand, no one's going to put her in a world where when dogs make her afraid she has no way out so i'm gonna stop the video there sorry that the camera got all wobbly my camera person they just showed up when you were when i was doing this but I'll see you guys in the future and as always you can find me online on my website if you want one-on-one -on -one consulting and you can also find my poetry book on amazon loving leading and, lo and losing stories from the dogs that trained me okay we'll see you then till next time folks